everyone, and welcome to the Able Voices Podcast. I'm Dr. Rhoda Bernard, Founding Managing Director of the Berkeley Institute for Accessible Arts Education, and I am proud to present this podcast featuring disabled artists and arts educators. We are inviting artists with disabilities to be guest hosts for the Able Voices Podcast. The guest host for this episode is actor and musician Noah Britton. Noah Britton is a singer, songwriter, guitarist, clothing designer, performance artist, and comedian. In 2010, he co-founded the first comedy troupe composed of people with Asperger's syndrome, Asperger's Are Us, who have performed over 150 shows in 10 countries. In his spare time, he is a psychology professor and has worked directly with people on the autism spectrum since 2005. Hello, everyone. This is Noah Britton. Uh, welcome to Able Voices. I am the guest host for this episode and the next couple. Very happy to be here. Uh, today we have Robert Jensen as our uh, incredibly special guest. So Robert Jensen is a multimedia artist and musician from Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, at age 17, he suffered severe injuries to his spinal cord after a fight left him paralyzed from the neck down. Uh, he has spent the subsequent uh, 20 or so years uh, getting his master's degree in metal smithing and creating sculptures and jewelry. He also opened Erie's only all ages music venue called Basement Transitions. Uh, when he isn't running shows, he spends most of his free time making sculptures, drawings, and his music project, Blunt Guts, uh, which has dark electronic music with stop motion animation. Bob, so happy you're here. Uh, so hopefully happy that covered here, you no. okay. Yeah, um, that was great. That was great. <laughs> I have been doing a deep dive into your work of the last few days and it's just so fun. It's so creepy and so fun at the same time. I feel like that's probably your goal. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really it. You know, I try to combine like a, a, a darkness, but also a bit of whimsy in there. Mm -hmm. You know, I find, just how it comes out of me. <laughs> well, I love it. The sculptures are so cool. Uh, you know, you're using your metalwork degree to to really like incredible, incredible, beautiful stuff. Everybody should check out the visual stuff. Obviously, we can't describe it. So uh, let's talk about um, your story as an artist. Uh, you know, were you making stuff even when you were like, you know, 12, 13, or were you just skating around being a, a, a teen with, with punk in your heart? Oh, I was absolutely a maker right from the start. You know, I've, I've always been somebody that's just had a little too much creativity and, and too much energy to like stop from, from making something in, in one direction or another. Um, I, I, I think, believe it. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, just a lot of energy, you know what I mean? I feel like um, you get bored really easily, right? That's the trick. I do. Yeah. That's like the best thing. <laughs> it's weird because even in a wheelchair, I pace. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And it's like drive around as if I was walking around. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. It's like it's, you get to that point where you're too tired to be creative, but you're too like still awake to like actually fall asleep and it's time to just roll around in circles or whatever. Were you getting in trouble at school because it was too dull and you were constantly trying to make stuff? I think I was like, I would get in trouble, but I had like, I was always a very charming and, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I quick to flatter my, my teachers and stuff to make sure that they, you know, stay on their good side. And, and honestly, I liked all of them anyway. So it was easy. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I feel like you're, you're in every field, you know, really like you're in all of the creative arts simultaneously and all the stuff you're doing is really interesting in different ways. And I feel like I'm similar in that I really, really want to do new things. And as soon as I've mastered it, I get bored and I don't want to do it anymore. That's exactly me. That's exactly me. It's not that I don't want to do it anymore. It's that I want to like do it in a new way or mm -hmm. take it further or, or, I'm a very experimental person when it comes to like creativity and like when I reach a certain plateau or something like mm -hmm. I, I'll keep knocking at doors until one of them opens to try and find a new avenue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I don't I don't typically come across like blocks in creativity. It's more like just like I want to go a new direction. <laughs> Fantastic. So uh, 
This is the Able Podcast, so they do want me to ask about your experience as a person with a disability, as an artist with disability. And I think the thing I'm really interested in is what are the good and bad things about how people treat you as a result of your disability? Uh, well, I don't really have a lot of problems with people mistreating me. Mm-hmm in any type of way, mm -hmm. because That's honestly, good. I'm like, I go into everything with a real positive kind of vibe quite mm -hmm. typically. And that usually works out well for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can usually back up anything that I like any of my claims and, and I can usually out talent anyone around me mm -hmm. a lot of times. And yeah. so I don't really have a lot of problems with people mistreating me. Mm -hmm. And if ever anyone does, then typically people around me come in like wolves and, and, and don't allow for that, you know, sure. at least in my community or whatever. I guess I'm thinking less about people like saying horrible stuff to you, but more like something I experience a lot is people um, liking me for the wrong reasons. You know what I mean? I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I find, I find that like, just due to the nature of like my job at basement transmissions, like running the venue and I run an art club there mm -hmm. and, and I try to like schedule time, public time and mm -hmm. private time, very like, and, and, and keep my private time very private at this point. Like mm -hmm. I'm not up for dealing with people like outside of that public setting mm -hmm. because that's like kind of like my office hours or something along those lines. Sure. And, and that's when they have their chance to like, communicate their their thoughts to me mm -hmm. and and then when that time's up if it's something that's like really you know like it's really gnawing away at me or getting at me mm -hmm. i can be like well i'm sorry time's up i gotta go we can we can continue this next time mm -hmm. or whatever but i i try to be kind of like remotely rigid with with my personal yeah respect scheduling that. or whatever yeah. i'll never forget something you told me you know like for those of you listening who aren't familiar with bob like he's truly one of the nicest, most positive people I've ever met. And I've met a lot of people and he does such a wonderful thing having this DIY venue for everybody. So, but I know it's been a ton of work and one thing. I've been actually in a much bigger space and everything now, by oh, the way. That's awesome. You know, it's like a giant building, an old theater house with 20 studio spaces in the basement. That's but, so sorry. cool. But no, it's okay. That's fantastic. I mean, yeah, like, go on. I know, Bob, when, when you started it, you were like, penniless basically because you had started this venue and then totally i mean that's just amazing dedication to really like helping the world so as i was saying bob's like the best guy that anybody ever met and one thing you told me when we met was like everybody wants to talk to you and you know when you're out walking someone's gonna just come up and be like hey let's talk for like 45 minutes yeah like, is this something that, I don't know, is there something you feel like you wish these people understood so they wouldn't hassle you for 45 minutes in a row, you know? I do. It's like, it's, it's, it's weird because like, I have like, you know, it's like the two sides to the coin. I feel at the same time, I completely understand that when they see somebody that like inspires them, mm -hmm. they want to come get inspired because life can kind of sucky and can be uninspiring. And so like, when you see the chance to see somebody that's going to pick you up, you want to take that chance and it's hard for people to understand that you're just a person just like them and all that kind of thing. And there's only so much time of the day. And, mm -hmm. and also I'm like, you know, I, I try to like, I got, I try to keep myself really busy and have all my projects going on. Yeah. And, and so I don't know, I'm, I try to understand it that way, even when I'm in my like edgiest, angstiest moment and they come up to me at the grocery store or something. And they're like trying to tell me about their, band or their son's band mm -hmm. or like they're trying to like whatever dealing with any end of my career you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's like i really am like i try to remember just get back into your personal space and, it, and it's right back yeah. to the calm you know what i mean yeah i remember like i try to try to look at it as like when i leave my house i'm either going to work or to take care of whatever chore it is Mm -hmm. that's like either it's either business or it's personal time. And just remember that that personal time is just around the corner. You can go back mm -hmm. any minute, just get mm -hmm. through it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're someone who really values that, like that serenity of, uh, of solitude, right? 
I I am. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. It's so important. I keep my life super simple, and if I didn't, I couldn't accomplish anything. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you're so anxious to get back into your creative space. It's like, I love my creative space. It's like the best freaking place to be. You know what I mean? I want to explain to the listeners that right now, Bob is in this incredible room full of his sculptures and paintings and stuff. And he's next to this wonderful, like, uh, Pharaoh head with this monster with wings coming out of it. And the Pharaoh head has these horizontal blue and black stripes that are identical to the one on, that's on Bob's shirt right now. And it seems like you're truly, you're truly thinking about art 100% of the time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just who I am. You know, I like to be creative. Well, that's awesome. So uh, another thing Berkeley's interested in is, you know, your arts education. Um, what did you study in undergrad? Uh, I initially started off when I went into college, I went in as, uh, I, I wanted to go for philosophy mm -hmm. and then after like a year of that, I enjoyed that a lot, but mm -hmm. I was like, uh, oh, this is like, I'm really going to like not be able to do anything with this. Mm -hmm. And everybody around me at the time was like, you have to figure out like what you want to do with your life. You know, that's where I was at that point. Sure. And so then I went into, um, art education. Okay. And like right away, I was like, I realized that like a school setting was not for me because like, I'm not like bad, weird, but I'm like, I'm just a different kind of dude, you know, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, and I was like looking around the room and I'm like, I'm just so different from all of these people. I couldn't imagine being in some job where I was that guy in a building full of those people. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not that we don't get along and everything. It's just that I'm not, I just, I would rather be in a, in a place where I like, didn't feel like the weirdo. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, um, yeah, that's. So then did you end up graduating with an art ed degree and not going into it? Was that what happened? No, after a semester of that, I, I found, I found metal smithing actually. Oh, okay, and, cool. um, I was kind of forced into taking a, a jewelry class. Okay. And I, and I studied under this dude, uh, named Keith LeBlue. Mm -hmm. uh, his wife was uh, a backup singer in the talking heads, which was great. A great intro. <laughs> That's cool. And he, yeah, totally. Nice. But, uh, he introduced me to, um, found object art and all that kind of thing. And, you know, on the first day of class, he, he sent us out to go dumpster diving. Cool. Which it was like a really great intro to a class. It was like, this is mm -hmm. not <laughs> typical. This could be for me, you know? Wow. And, and, and after, after that, I, I, I said to the, you know, like I said to my professor the next semester, I said, I think this like could be for me, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I would have never thought jewelry was something I could be into. Yeah. Um, it's always a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So I ended up dedicating myself at that point to, um, to metal smithing. Awesome. That's so mm -hmm. cool. And yeah, it, it's paid off. It, the work is so gorgeous. Um, yeah. Thank sh you. Shout out to the website it's it's really I, I can't describe it but it's so fun and as you say you're a different kind of guy which like i understand you know i gotta deal with working in an environment of people who are not me and it's it's weird because i really have to divorce my personality from my work and i feel like you're lucky enough that you don't have to do that which is amazing you know like as a yeah. professor i can't be the weird artist that i am and so well, every once in a while, I have to go see an accountant or a lawyer. Or <laughs> sure. Like, so there's times where I also right. have to like, you know, like to do that. And like, I did end up going on after after undergrad to, you know, to a master's, get my master's degree in jewelry and metal smithing. Right. And I wanted to be a professor also. And I did some adjunct professing. Oh, cool. And I also realized at that time that that job also wasn't for me for exactly the reasons you're talking about. It was mm -hmm. like, I'm like a really great teacher in, the, in, in a group setting where people just kind of like watch me while they're doing their own thing and and, and but it's and for, as far as like being up in front of everyone i can oh, do uh -huh. it interesting but it's just it's just not fun for me to do it that way totally okay i want to yeah. talk about um tick tock because uh you emailed me like this is a big part of my internet presence and mm -hmm. you know tell us what happened with your tick tock uh well 
So I was getting to the point where like my, the venue and everything was starting to go well. And um, I'm like trying to get my hands back on some larger sculptures and getting into all of these things. And I, and my, my blunt guts project is starting to like take root and everything. And so I had talked to my daughter, Ziola, who um, she graduated from Chatham and she's also an artist. And so I had reached out to her and I'm like, well, I, I really would love to get like a better media presence online. And I'd like, you know, I'd love it if I could get you to do it, which she declined. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I stayed at it for almost a full year, uh, just saying wow. like, there's just no one else that will like actually that actually knows me well enough that I can be comfortable and just have them film me and can get into my personal life a little bit mm -hmm. to show kind of who I am a little better. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, and so eventually she agreed to do it for a small fee each month, which, um, you know, she was going to do it for free, but I kind of was like, you know, you have to take the, that's the whole point is to show you that this could be something you're good at and that mm -hmm. we've a chance for us to work together also. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so she agreed to do it on kind of reluctantly. Mm -hmm. And within three months, she really had like, um, she'd kind of, she made me like a tick TikTok sensation, you know, <laughs> I had some like videos with a lot of views. Yeah. So I, we're talking millions, everybody. This isn't this isn't a guy with four hundred views who's bragging. You know, this is this is real. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And also, it's a chance for me to just be myself and not have to like with, with my disability. It's hard for me to like do the camera end of it. I'm like, the, I got the shakiest hands. You know oh, what I mean? Uh -huh. Okay. And it's like it's an issue for me with a camera. Um, Interesting. So that's Does why that... I was like, sorry, I was wondering if that affects the metal smithing. It doesn't. Surprisingly, awesome. the thing that's the thing that's really great about metal smithing mm -hmm. is that it's such an intense process with like to make metal move, especially I'm like a fabricator from sheets, sheets of metal, you know, mm -hmm. and typically non ferrous metals so like copper and brass, silver, gold, mm -hmm. those kind of things. Mm -hmm. It's like it's metal. It doesn't move very fast. You're not trying to move it fast. You're trying to move it smart. Okay. You understand gotcha. what I'm saying? Yeah. It yeah. matters where you hit hit the hit the metal and 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 it's kind of a slower process. So it gives you like time to kind of move through it slowly and, okay. and calculate it as opposed to like a fast okay. uh fast thrash gotcha. around and it comes out kind of thing. It's more of calculated movements. Nice. All right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was curious about the TikTok response because obviously you got a ton of people. I'm sure it helped, you know, sales and attention on your work. But I'm sure you also got people who just, as I was saying, you would be like, I wish you understood this. I wish you knew what it's like to get 4,000 people asking you about, you know, the same question or whatever. Did that happen to you? It's happened to me in Asperger's or us. I was wondering if you've had the same experience. Uh, not really, not so much. Okay. Honestly, it was like, it's more like I had more like the things that stand out to me that where I, you know, to me, it was just a lot of people paying me compliments that wouldn't normally pay me compliments. You know nice. what I mean? Like in real, in real life, I feel like people are a little bit too afraid to approach me mm -hmm. and say, say what, say what they're thinking. Hmm. Okay. But because because it's TikTok, they can they can be more open and friendly and just, you know, just genuinely nice and 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 give me actually good, good feedback or cool. All right. All those kind of things. So it's, that's fabulous. Congrats. Helps, helps boost my self esteem <laughs> if nothing else. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Did you find it? Yeah. Did you find like, you know, when it wears off, when the initial boosts of like, Oh, there's a million people messaging me or whatever, when that wears off, did you find yourself being able to get back to level pretty fast? Or was it like, Ooh, I want more TikTok fans now. I never did any of it. I always stayed focused on my work. I would nice. just have Ziola film the stuff when she came home. She'd film this stuff. And I never paid attention to it really That's at great. all as far as like that that vibe. So for me, I didn't like it didn't affect me like that. That's wonderful. You're very lucky. Yeah. You have such a yeah. great balanced view of the world. So the last couple things, what are you working on now? What's next as an artist? Well, I just finished, uh, I just finished, I was a featured artist at, at a local event. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was kind of a really big deal for me here locally. Yeah. So I, I had made like an entire body of work specifically for the show. And so right now, right now I'm in the process of getting that work documented. 
Okay. Uh, like proper proper photo- photographs of it all mm-hmm. and all that kind of thing. And then I was offered a solo exhibition here in town also. So I'm kind of headed that direction with the visual art stuff. Um, awesome. Yeah, it's great. It was a really nice door opening kind of thing. Um, and I'm a I'm about to release a new album. Uh, I have a bunch of new music that I just finishing up the visual art. I've been finished with the album for like about a month and a half now. Okay. Um, so I got like I got pans in the fryer all over nice. the place right now. Speaking of blunt guts, I want to give shout outs to uh, Friends No More, which has some of the best lyrics of any song. <laughs> this is Thanks. so simple, but so like, <laughs> yeah, it's like a it's like a koan in terms of it's just like so straightforward, but it really gets to the heart of, you know, being mad at somebody. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I also want to give a shout out to Waves, which has incredible auto tune on it which i usually can't stand but really like it lands perfectly and it makes so much sense on that I'd oh love, thanks i'd love to hear you try even more interesting stuff with auto tune which again i i that's so there often. that's what i sort of did on this next upcoming nice. group of songs there's some really really cool super weird uh, I, honestly i never heard anything like it as far as experimenting with autotune and a bunch of other pedals and stuff and starting to get really wacky <laughs> that's so and cool. it's great awesome. yeah so the last question uh what advice would you give to young disabled artists it sort of seems cliche or whatever but like you really have to just like chase after that dream as as hard as you possibly can and you have to be really like unrelenting about that because like we just have to work harder than everybody else. It's hard. You have not only to get through all of the doors towards your dream, but also the physical ones or the mental ones or whatever mm-hmm. you're dealing with. And you can do it. I, I have done it over and over again. And, and I make a lot of my peers that are, that are not disabled look weak and pathetic. And, and, and I like to do that because it makes them work harder and become better people too. Mm-hmm. And, and, and whatever your dream is, I know that you can do it. I had a friend tell me one time something that we, when I was in graduate school, mm-hmm. we would pull all nighters. I would pull all nighters and there were several other people in all disciplines that would, and we kind of had access to this complex building, mm-hmm. uh, and with, uh, you know, all different buildings. There's a print shop, a, a wood shop, a sculpture area. And I was in the sculpture barn with this dude named Jeff McGee, who's a fantastic uh, sculptor. And he's a professor also at this point, but we were down there. It was like four in the morning, super late. And I was like, you know, we were talking about it. And he's like, and I'm like, I just want to be like the best disabled artist that ever lived. And he was like, that's, that's like super stupid. I'm like, what? He's like, he's like, why would you want to chase after that dream when you could be the best artist that ever existed ever? Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I got to work harder. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was exhausted, but I knew that I could, I, I could work harder and that was great motivation for me. So that's awesome. That's such a beautiful yeah. way to look at it. Cause yeah, who, you know, who wants to be, uh, anything but the best. <laughs> yep. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, thank you so much for your time. It's like, I could hang out and talk with you as long as you want, but I know, like you said, you got your private time and your public time. Totally. It's always, it's always such a pleasure to talk to you. And just like to remember this guy sacrificed everything to give the people of Erie somewhere cool to go and to keep a scene going. And it worked like, that's amazing. <laughs> like it worked. Sort of worked. I mean, it yeah. worked in that basement transitions has been around now for a long time. Like that's, yeah, decade. that's a miracle, you know, and so few venues last that long period of any kind. And, uh, I played at this, this place in its old location and it was really amazing and life changing. And I bet the new one's even better. It is. It's great. So cool. But yeah, man, it was a pleasure. Give my love to Ziola and Jack and, uh, you know, thank them for everything, but also for getting me in touch with you. This is for sure the best. Yeah, totally. Thank you again for the opportunity. And and I wish you nothing but the best. Everybody check out, uh, blunt guts on Spotify and on Bandcamp. check out, uh, robertjensen.info check out, uh, 
all of uh, Bob's amazing sculptures on his website and uh, check out Basement Transitions on Facebook. All this stuff is really great. And uh, thanks so much. Yep, thank you again. Voices is a production of the Berkeley Institute for Accessible Arts Education, led by me, Dr. Rhoda Bernard, the founding managing director. It is produced by Daniel Martinez del Campo. The intro music is by Kai Levin, and our closing song is by Sebastian Batista. Kai and Sebastian are students in the arts education programs at the Berkeley Institute for Accessible Arts Education. If you would like to learn more about our work, Find us online at berkeley.edu slash B-I-A-A-E or email us at B-I-A-A-E at berkeley, that's L-E-E dot E-D-U.